In this video, we're going to talk about how to determine the isoelectric point of amino acids. To begin, we want to start first by defining a few terms. So first of all, a Zwitter ion, sometimes also called a dipolar ion, is a molecule with both positive and negative charges. So that makes it an ion, right, having positive and negative charges. However, when you add up the total charges on the molecule, you end up with a net charge of zero. So overall, your molecule has no net charge, but if you look at different parts of the molecule, some parts will have positive charges and other parts of the same molecule will have negative charges. The other term we want to define is the isoelectric point, which is usually denoted by PI. The isoelectric point is the pH at which all the molecule is in its Zwitter ion form. Now, usually you look at a molecule and just say, oh, that's the molecule we have in solution. But remember, when you're dealing with molecules with acidic and basic functional groups, that's not the case, right? If you add a weak acid in solution, some of the weak acid will be in its protonated form, and other molecules will dissociate to form the deprotonated form. So then you have a mixture of different molecules, and those different molecules have different charges. So to better understand how this works, let's do a quick review of acids. Remember, when you're looking at an acidic functional group, whether your functional group is protonated or deprotonated in solution depends on the pH compared to the pKa of that particular, particular functional group. So when the pH is less than pKa, that means we're in very acidic conditions. So that means your molecule is mostly in its protonated form. Conversely, when the pH is greater than the pKa, then the solution is fairly basic compared to your acidic functional group. So your molecule is going to be mostly in its deprotonated form. And finally, if the pH is equal to the pKa, we have this unique situation where your molecule is 50-50. Half of it is protonated and the other half is deprotonated. All right, so keeping this in mind, let's take a look at amino acids. And we're gonna start first by looking at polar and nonpolar amino acids. The reason why we're starting with these is because acidic and basic amino acids are more complicated. Their side chains are acidic and basic, they can donate or accept protons. If we start first with polar and nonpolar amino acids, we don't have to worry about the side chain. It's not going to be involved with determining the isoelectric point. We only have to worry about the amino group and the carboxyl group, right? Both of these can accept or donate protons. So if we start first with this molecule, we're gonna notice that both the amino group and the carboxyl group are protonated. Since both of these groups are protonated, that means we must be in a situation where the pH is less than the pKa of both of these functional groups. And for LAMCAT, you do need to have memorized the pKa's of the amino group and carboxyl group of amino acids. So the amino group generally has a pKa around 9 to 10, whereas the carboxylic acid generally has a pKa of about 2. So that means right now, if both of these groups are protonated, our solution has to be at a pH of something like 1. All right, if we're at a pH of one, well, we can say that the pH is less than both of these pKa's. So both of these groups should be mostly protonated in solution. Now, what we can go ahead and do is we can start to increase the pH. So going from left to right, we're gonna go ahead and gradually increase the pH of the solution. We're starting at a pH of one, that's very acidic. So what happens as we increase the pH? Well, as you go from one to two to three to four, at some point the pH is going to exceed the pKa values. When that happens, that group is going to go from protonated to deprotonated. And between these two groups, since the carboxylic acid has a lower pKa, it's going to be deprotonated first. 
So that means at some point in solution, we're going to have this molecule over here. Same exact molecule, except now the carboxylic acid has been deprotonated into the carboxylate. And if we want to think about when this happens, this happens around this pKa, right? When the pH is equal to the pKa of 2, that means half of your molecule is in the protonated form and half of your molecule is in the deprotonated form. Now, as we go up in pH, as we exceed a pH of 2, then most of our molecule is in the deprotonated form. However, as we continue to increase the pH, once we exceed a pH of about 9 to 10, then the amino group is also going to become deprotonated. And that's going to leave us with this molecule. H2N COO minus. And we still have our side chain. All right. Now we can consider there's various possible pH values that this last molecule could occur at. For instance, we could be at a pH of 11, 12, 13, right? Any of those pH values would work because they're all greater than the pKa's of the two acidic groups. So let's just say, for instance, here, we're at a pH of 12, but again, the specific number here isn't as important so long as it's above 9 or 10. All right. So now, looking at these three molecules, we can see that polar and nonpolar amino acids can take on three different states of protonation slash deprotonation in solution. So the next thing I want us to look at is the charge. So if we take a look at this molecule on the left, if we're looking at the charge of the molecule, we'll notice that it has a plus one charge. There's a positive charge and nothing else. If we take a look at this molecule in the middle, we're going to see that its charge is zero. Right? The amino group has a plus one charge, the carboxyl group has a minus one charge, that cancels out. So here we have a molecule where there are positive and negative charges, but the net charge is zero. That means right here we have our Zwitter ion. So next we can take a look at this last molecule, which we can see it only has a minus one charge. So its charge is going to be minus one. All right. So now we want to figure out what the isoelectric point is. The isoelectric point is where we have our molecule all in its Zwitter ion form. Now, again, this is important to emphasize that we want all of our molecule in its Zwitter ion form. A lot of people would usually think that the Zwitter ion is just the pH, what, sorry, a lot of people think that the isoelectric point is just the pH where you have Zwitter ion. However, let's consider, for instance, a pH of 2. If I'm at a pH of 2, our pH is equal to the pKa of our carboxyl group. By definition, that means half of our carboxyl group is protonated and half of it is deprotonated. So that means that a pH of 2, I have 50% of this molecule on the left and 50% Zwitter ion. And of course, that's not what we're looking for with the isoelectric point. We don't want just half Zwitter ion, half something else. We want all Zwitter ion. Okay. So keeping that in mind, then how can we determine the pH when all of our molecule is in its Zwitter ion form? Well, there is an equation that you can use. The equation is PI is equal to pKa1 plus pKa2 divided by 2. This is an equation that you're going to want to have memorized for MCAT. It's very important. Now, one important thing I want to mention about this equation is even though we write pKa1 and pKa2, you're not always just using the first two pKa's to calculate the isoelectric point. And we're going to see why that is when we look at acidic and basic amino acids. But here, just to specify what these do refer to, pKa1 and pKa2 refer to the two pKa's 
by or on either side of the Zwitter ion. So what I mean by this is, if you're looking at a molecule with multiple acidic side chains, with multiple pKa values, you're going to want to identify your Zwitter ion, right? Find your Zwitter ion. Then you're going to want to use the pKa on the left and the pKa on the right that got the Zwitter ion. So in this case, the pKa's that are relevant here is here, this was a pKa of two. When you exceeded a pH of two, you lost the proton on the carboxylic acid. And the other pKa here on the right is about 9 to 10. If you lost another proton by exceeding a pH of 9 to 10, then you would lose the Zwitter ion and end up with this molecule with a full negative charge. So if we want to go ahead and do this calculation, we certainly can. We're going to take pi is going to be equal to our pKa of 1, which is the one on the left, which is 2, plus our second pKa. So our second pKa, 9 or 10, depending on the specific amino acid. So let's just say in this case, it's about 10. This would give us an isoelectric point of about 6. For other amino acids that are also polar and nonpolar, it might be slightly lower than 6, right? Between 5.5 to 6. But polar and nonpolar amino acids all have an isoelectric point very close to this value. Okay, so this is how you determine the isoelectric point of polar and nonpolar amino acids. In the next video, we're going to look at calculating the isoelectric point for acidic and basic amino acids.